Welcome back to the Wizard Shop, and it's time for more Car Trek Ferrari 308. This time around, we're actually going to take a look in the engine bay. We're going to start it and let you guys hear it and talk about the plan of action from here forward. Let's get started. So I'll go ahead and open the rear bonnet, take a look around inside, and show you some things that I've already found. Then I'll start it up and we'll talk about the way it runs. I'll go ahead and open it now. Now, did it not come with hood struts or are they not working? These didn't come with hood struts. It's actually supposed to have a little hood rod that goes right here that's missing. This may be the, I, be, I believe this is the original rod. I'll have to repair that and put a new one on it. So this is the Ferrari 3 liter V8 F106. I believe it's the AB. It is carved, as you can see, it's a two valve engine. And it's actually a 2.9 liter. They call it a three liter. It's like 2.976 or some weird number like that. They're like 240 horsepower or something. It's not horrendous a lot of power, but it's also a very small car. Very amazing sound when it's set up right. One of the things I've noticed during filming of Car Trek, they had some coolant leaks on the intake manifolds. And you can see over here that they just sandwiched some silicone in it to stop the leak so they could continue filming. And I don't blame them for doing that. That's what they had to do to continue filming. They couldn't just stop filming. I will have to be taking those all off, put new gaskets and do it correctly. But at the price I got it, I can't complain. What's the pull chain? This used to have aftermarket cruise control, I believe. It went to here. I don't know that I'm going to be hooking that back up. I'm not sure. I don't even know if it even still works. I doubt it. They did put new timing belts on it. But interesting on the distributor over there on the other side of the engine, you can see it is blue colored. That's off of like a Ford 302. And that was done long before anyone involved with Car Trek or me owned this car. But it works. All the cylinders spark. It sparks in the correct order. It's a single distributor setup. Normally there would have been a second distributor right here, four over here and four over there for a V8. But it's been converted to a single distributor setup with common off-the-shelf parts. Right here used to be a pulley for a smog pump that was right here. The smog pump obviously has been deleted in the past. I will not be putting it back on. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. You guys are going to notice that it's not running on all eight cylinders. You can hear it. So basically throughout the entirety of Car Trek, they were running on six or seven cylinders. I'm not even sure exactly how many. I verified this, not the ignition system. All the spark plugs are firing very strong blue spark and they're in the correct time. But as you've seen when I spray gas, it smooths out and starts sounding like a Ferrari again. So as you guys saw when I sprayed gas in it, it smoothed out. It started to sound like a Ferrari again and not a Subaru or a, a boxer engine. The problem is the carburetors are gummed up really bad. I've tried to adjust it, I've tried all the different settings. One of the carburetors, it makes no difference. It doesn't matter. It's just, there's no fuel going through. Why, I don't know. I'm going to have to pull all four carbs off and go through them. So that's going to be the next step. I'm going to go ahead and pull those off. I'll also pull off the intake manifolds and take care of those 
nasty silicone seals. So I'll go ahead and pull those off real quick and we'll take a look on the insides and see what we see. So I've got the carburetors off, the intakes and the valve covers. A lot of things that were leaking, the issues they were fighting during car trek. There was a quick fix that was attempted to try to get everything to be leak free so they could film and it was done very quickly and not very well. But I don't knock them for that. I fully understand that they've got filming to do. They have to get things done. They can't wait two, three, or four weeks to get the car fixed. They have to get it done. So I'm undoing a lot of their quick fixes and putting it back together properly with the proper gaskets and everything. I have found a little bit of bad news and I have found the carburetors are pretty dirty. Let's take a look at the carburetors. So here I have all four Weber DCNF carburetors. These are 40s. These are very expensive. If I had to buy them, they are a little over a thousand dollars a piece. And I do not want to buy carburetors when these could be cleaned and reused. They tried to throw a quick kit in it. I think a cheap kit from China with some jets and things, and it just didn't turn out very well. One thing that I noticed, if you look down in the bowl, there's a lot of dirt in there. There's actually debris. And if you look over in this one especially, very, very dirty. So one thing I know is if there's dirt in the bowl, there's dirt in the jets. These things weren't running, one or two of these weren't running very well, if at all. A couple of the cylinders weren't firing at all. And I have proven that it's the carburetors by spraying gas in them. It came alive. I need to pull all these jets and pull everything apart and go through and clean it all up and I think I'll be fine. I'll also put a new fuel filter and a new fuel pressure regulator, all the different parts and pieces. That's very likely what the debris is that we're seeing is degrading of those. I also have a new kit that is not from China. As you can see, it's from Italy. It is a good quality kit. So I'll go through and clean these up, rebuild them all, and get them all shiny and nice and new again, and get them ready to go back in. Let's go take a look at a little bit of the bad news that I found. So down below I have the valve covers, and that's not the bad news, those are fine. I'll clean them up and get them repainted. But on these intakes, this is why they had to put silicone so thick. It's the corrosion on the gasket sealing surface. There's antifreeze on these that runs through this hole and channels into the heads. You can see the little triangular shape there. There's antifreeze that runs through here, or coolant. I'm going to have these TIG welded and then resurfaced because these again are probably a thousand dollars a piece or something crazy. I can get these fixed up and reuse them. I may just have them resurfaced but you don't want to go too deep on your cut on this because then the alignment of all the linkages and everything will be all messed up. So I think I can get these TIG welded, aluminum TIG welded, resurface it nice and flat and that will be fixed. So you can see here that Although they put new gaskets on for car trek, they didn't hold because of the corrosion. So they used blobs of silicone to seal it up so they could film. I do not want to put blobs of silicone. I'd like to do it right. Let's take a look at this one. As you can see on the ceiling surface there on the edge, there's a little bit there. I'll get a new gasket and show you guys what I'm talking about. As you can see where it would try to seal the coolant could escape underneath the gasket and get out anyways, and that's what it was doing. So we'll get that fixed up. That's a little bit of bad news, but it's not horrible news. And the nice thing is, is there's no corrosion on the cylinder heads themselves. I'm so happy. I was so worried that it would be something really bad, but they're perfectly flat. Let's take a look. So as you can see, we started removing the silicone that they used to seal it up. And there is no corrosion here. It's nice flat. There's some of the green residue left from the gasket, but the gasket is gone. But again, no corrosion. The heads are perfectly fine, and I'm so happy about that. I was worried. I will be replacing this coolant pipe because it looks like there was a vacuum line that was laying across it. And that rubbing that it did there is pretty deep. I don't trust that. That's a coolant pipe. I don't need that to let loose and spray antifreeze everywhere. So I'll be ordering a new pipe. One really cool thing, and Freddie Tavares told me that this had aftermarket performance camshafts on it. But I was like, what does that mean? He was like, uh, it, it's, I mean, he couldn't really describe it. He didn't exactly know all the numbers and everything. But when I take a look at, on the camshaft, what these are is the stock Ferrari camshafts. 
But at some point way in the past, they were sent off to Iski or Iskandarian and reground for performance specs. Take a look at the number. Let's take a look at the numbers on there. You can see it says Y82N, 4048CC, and right below that is ISKY, ISKI. So these were reground to a performance specification. I'm not exactly sure of the number, the duration, or the lift, or anything. But that's really cool once I get this all back together and get it running right. Maybe it'll have a little bit more power on the top end or something, so that's really cool. They did do the timing belt and all the pulleys and everything associated there. I'm still going to pull the covers off and re-verify the timing, make sure everything's lined up properly, and double check their work because it's not that I don't trust Jared or Freddie, it's that this expensive engine is thousands and tens of thousands of dollars to replace. I want to see with my eyes that the timing belt is correct. So that's where we're at with this. I've got a lot of work to do to get the carburetors cleaned up. We'll start getting this thing back together and it'll look really nice. Well, thanks for following along. And on the next video, when you see me again on this, we're going to be pulling more of the interior part. I'm actually going to remove the dash and have it recovered, I would like to go ahead and go black like it's supposed to be. And it's cheaper to have that reupholstered than it is to try and buy another one. So that'll be the next thing you guys see. We're gonna pull the dash out and a few other items. And I've really got my work cut out ahead of me on this. So if you're curious what kind of tools we're using to work on this Ferrari, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. All the tools in the shop are listed that we use for sale. And we get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure you hit the subscribe button. You guys don't want to miss out on all the updates on this Car Trek Ferrari 308. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.